What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Brienne and in today's video, we are going to be discussing why black women hate their natural hair. So this is going to be a very long video I'm supposing because I have lots of notes on this topic and different components broken down into why black women may have a disdain for their hair. This is a very heavy topic. Of course, black women are not a monolith. So there are different reasons why this is the case. And there are black women that absolutely love their hair. But we are going to be discussing the possible root of why there is so much talk and discussion about black women in our hair and why everybody cares so much about our hair and why we even care so much about our hair. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. The first thing I want to talk about is the term nappy. Historically, nappy hair has been used as a derogatory phrase to characterize the hair of black people, specifically black women. This term was just one of the many phrases used by white people to justify their superiority over black people. We need to get to the very distinct root. White slave masters wanted black people to be innately aware of the differentiation they had compared to white people when it came to hair texture. That is because most black hair texture is one of the most unmistakable features to define whether someone is black or non-black. And the term nappy was made to humiliate black people and to make them feel less than. So for example, let's get into the Tignan Laws. So the Tignan Laws were enacted in the 18th century and these set of laws were meant to cement social hierarchy and inevitably legalized discrimination. In order to prevent jeopardizing white women's social status, the Tignan laws required black women to conceal their hair. In essence, white officials felt as if black women showing their hair would be a threat to white women because black women's hairstyles are very intricate and versatile. This caused everyday white citizens to look at black hair as a terrible thing to have, and they would use the term nappy to insult and lessen a black person's self-esteem. Although the term does have a negative connotation in the past, a lot of black people today are now reclaiming this term and now turning it into something positive. However, in the black community, the word nappy still holds prevalence and even black people use the term to dehumanize or insult another black person. AKA, many black people don't want nappy hair and or do not want to be associated with it. So this gets into my next point, type four hair, AKA, what is considered nappy hair? Go oh, down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. It is ingrained in a lot of people's brains that the closer to European qualities equals the better. This can tie into colorism, texturism, featureism, classism. But I will be speaking specifically about texturism today. Texturism is the belief that only loose or well-defined curls are to be appreciated or praised versus tighter or kinkier hair. For example, hairstyles for ladies with kinkier hair is more expensive than those with looser curls. And that is not every situation, but in many, that is definitely the case. This requires ladies with kinkier hair to come to their appointments at an earlier time or having to pay an additional price because their hair is kinkier. But we're gonna get into this a little bit later on in this video. Now, not all afros and kinky hair are exactly the same. Depending on the feel or texture, there are various types of hair that predominantly black women can have. This is why there was a hair chart created. The hair chart goes from type one, which is straight hair, to type four, which is kinky hair. Most black women have type 4A, 4B, and 4C hair. 4C hair being the kinkiest and most fragile. Type 4C hair has the most negative stigmas held against it. In our society, type 4C hair is seen as unkempt, unmanageable, hard to deal with, not able to grow. The list goes on and on. This leads a lot of black women with this specific hair type to not even wanna deal with their hair, let alone let anybody see it. Now we're gonna go into my next talking point. And this has to do with the long hair epidemic. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt. Many black women have an obsession with hair length. This is why doing something like cutting your hair is considered a very bold thing to do. Most non-black women can make the decision to cut their hair and say something like, it'll grow back, whereas black women are nervous that their hair won't grow back. This is due to hair length being a very definitive characteristic for many black women. There's obsession with length in the black community because non-black women are known to have longer hair versus black women, though black women are very well able to grow their hair just as long. And once again, in our society, the closer to European, the better. 
So the whole stigma that black women can't grow their hair, in my opinion, is tied to the whole discrimination against black people for generations. For centuries, we never had the opportunity to learn to properly care for our hair and love our hair. And that's because in America, society isn't built for us. Honestly, anywhere society is not built for us. Our hair is delicate, beautiful, and more fragile, which implicates it needs a bit more love. Imagine in a society geared towards us or a society that actually cared about us, where our hair would be today. This would stem back to generations of us being able to properly care for our hair. For generations, we were trying to make our hair more quote unquote white. And when I say make our hair more quote unquote white, that means straightening it putting chemicals in it, hiding our texture, wearing wigs, weaves, all of that is because we were taught that the only way to live a sustainable life is to be more quote unquote white. I'm not gonna say quote unquote white, to be more white, period. All these techniques to make our hair more white only damaged our hair. All this damage was done to solely fit into society because any type of love or embrace towards our hair, it affected us negatively. Some examples of this, not getting the job you want because your hair is considered not professional, getting kicked off of your sports team, and in some cases, not even being able to go to school. So imagine if we, black people, were born into a society that taught us how to properly love and care for our hair. There would be more positive stereotypes held towards us versus negative stereotypes. This goes into my next component, the cost of natural hair products. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children. Maintaining your natural hair comes at a price. A big price at that. Black women spend nine times more on beauty and grooming products than the average consumer. In a single year, many black women spend thousands of dollars on natural hair products. But why is this? This is because natural hair products contain more expensive ingredients than the leading brands. Natural hair products also do not contain parabens, which are a preservative that helps increase the shelf life of items, causing them to have a lower shelf life due to the absence of preservatives, harsh chemicals, and even hormones. As a result, natural hair product manufacturers must compensate not only for their high quality components, but also for the production and logistical costs of replacing their product on the shelves on a regular basis. Hence why black women will opt for wigs in weeks. Which goes into my next point. Ooh, So an install for a wig or weave has gotten pretty pricey, hence why I have yet to have either, okay? But that is due to a lot of black women ditching perms and now wanting a style that makes their hair more quote unquote easier. And the process of making your hair more quote unquote easier is getting a wig or a weave. And most women will opt for a wig or a weave versus their natural hair because with your natural hair, you have to deal with it every day. And like I said previously, our hair is very intricate and it takes a lot of time just to do and to style and to make look presentable to what you would consider presentable. And everybody has different definition of what they consider their curls looking presentable as. Though the price of a wig or weave can easily equate to the cost of natural hair products, it is way easier to maintain according to many black women. It's less time consuming. You can literally roll out of bed without having to do your hair or think about your hair. And wigs and weaves are very versatile. You can straighten it, you can curl it, you can color it without damaging your hair at all. But with weaves, of course, you won't damage most of your hair. You might damage the front though. <laughs> so these are a few of the reasons why black women choose to get wigs or weaves. In the hair industry, there have been a few spottings of texturism. People have spotted texturism with some hairstylists either refusing to do women with 4C's hair or charging them a lot more than any other person. They will deem 4C hair or thicker hair as something that is unmanageable and they just can't do it. Many people, specifically black women, were very angry at these hairstyles for doing so and call them out for their bad behavior. And honestly, I agree with many black women that were upset at this. We can't control what hair we're born with. Same as I don't believe that women should be having to pay for feminine hygiene products. I didn't ask to be a woman and I definitely didn't ask to have to have my menstrual cycle, okay? 
okay, no one asked for that. And same with these women having to pay double just to get their hair done. If you can't do 4C hair, especially as a black hairstylist, you shouldn't be a hairstylist. When you go to beauty school, you should be trained to work on all different hair types, not just some hair types. These ridiculous policies just create more of a disdain for natural hair, especially for women with thicker hair textures, because they now have to pay more because you don't want to service them. They cannot control the hair that they are naturally born with. And my last and final point is the rise of natural hair. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. So yes, we all know natural hair is now being more accepted and more loved and black women are being taught how to care for their hair. You can now see tutorials on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, you name it, you will find a tutorial. However, many mixed or racially ambiguous women are being the face in media of natural hair. What exactly does this mean now? I think y'all already know before I even get into this. <laughs> Typically these women that they show in the media when representing natural hair care products or just solely representing natural natural hair, they typically are lighter skin and then have looser curl textures. This is deemed as more attractive in our society, unfortunately. These women are now being referred to as the poster child for black women. These women being Zendaya, Amanda La Steinberg, Yara Shahidi, whereas fully black women or dark skinned black women are not receiving a seat at the table. And this ties back to the one drop rule. So if you're not aware what the one drop rule is, the one drop rule just basically means if you have a drop of blood that is black in you, you're considered black. And though in the past this was considered a bad thing, today it just gives people that aren't black the eligibility to be considered black. And they use that as a tool and a mechanism that will help to uplift them because black culture is more popular than ever today. Now I'm not saying at all these women are these bad people because Zendaya has even spoken up for black women and has even said that she gets roles that are catered towards dark skinned black women that she turns down. And I think these are all phenomenal women and I love them as actresses. But we have to keep it real when it comes to things like this and how it further prevents us as a society to grow, especially in the black community. And most of these women have looser textured curls and that becomes the epitome of black women. So when a black woman with kinkier hair comes into the picture, people are confused and look at their hair as not attractive or beautiful. This is incredibly problematic and really affects young black girls with kinkier hair and darker skin. They begin questioning the beauty of their hair and start opting out for wigs, weaves, covering their hair at such a young age. And then the next generation gets affected and the next generation gets affected and the next generation gets affected and it's just a repeating cycle. So this all goes back to me saying, we need to learn to love our natural hair. Though we do have a very long way to go, black women have started a movement to learn to cherish and love our curls or our kinks, like who cares? Today, there are so many tutorials and products out there to help us care for our hair properly. And that goes into me mentioning one company that I feel really reflects loving black women's hair and treating black women's hair. The company Yugo Natural advocates for black women and provide a beautiful collection of protective styles because they believe that natural hair deserves to be celebrated even when it's being protected. One of their products consists of the satin pull puff. So I really love this product primarily because it allows me to pull my hair back when I'm just in the house or even when I want to go outside. Some women are into gel and edge control. I'm one of those women and some are not. So I want to show you guys me putting the pull puff in without having to put any product in my hair. So I did a braid out on my first day at work, as y'all know. Actually, y'all don't know. I am a news intern at a television station. So I wanted to come in in my most beautiful and blackest form. And that was, of course, wearing my natural hair out. So after a long day and my braid out was like tired, I went to pull it back and I used the pull puff that you go natural provided to me. It's super easy. You just take the hair tie, put it around your afro, and then pull it to as tight as you want it to be. And then boom, you have yourself a very nice hairstyle that's easy. And it also adds length to your curls if that's something that you want to do. So I typically use this pull puff at nighttime whenever I am trying to protect my hair and I don't want it in my face. So whenever I have a braid out in like I did in this particular video, at the end of the day, I use the pull puff to pull my hair back and I can go to sleep with it without damaging my hair at all. 
There was no tension to my hair, so I'm not pulling out any extra hair, and my hair just felt super protected and it looked really good while I was getting ready and preparing myself for the end of my day. So if you guys want to check out You Go Natural, they have a variety of products, but the Pull Puff is the one that I used. I love the Pull Puff, and it really does help with protecting your hair and just not doing too much with your hair because us as black women, we have to be more careful with what we're putting in our hair and how we're treating our hair and caring for it like it's our little baby. So I will leave You Go Natural link down below for you guys to check them out. So in connection to our natural hair, I do want to say that I do think that it's okay for you to straighten your hair, wear wigs, wear weaves, curl your hair, even perm it because our hair is so freaking versatile. Do what you want with it. But at the end of the day, do not neglect your natural hair and your natural curls or kinks. It is incredibly ignorant and oppressive to assume that black women that may wear a weave or wig does not love herself or her hair. A lot of black women are immediately associated with self-hatred and I've seen this a lot when it comes to black men when they're trying to come for black women. There's nothing wrong wearing a wig. There's nothing wrong wearing weave. If I want to switch it up, I'm gonna switch it up. If you want to deal with my hair every day, then you deal with my hair every day, but I ain't gonna deal with it. <laughs> hair is a personal choice that everyone has the right to make and we should be allowed to do so without the fear of being judged or receiving negative feedback. Regardless of the many biases held against our mane, please treat your hair, wear it like a crown that it is, and I promise you, you will feel just as royal as you really are. Whether you wear your hair natural, whether you wear a wig, whether you wear a weave, rock it, love it, be it, but never forget where you came from. All right guys, so that is the end of this video. Of course, I wanna know what y'all opinions are in the comments down below. What are your opinions when it comes to black women in their natural hair? If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And yeah, that is in this video and I will see y'all in my next video. I love you guys so very much. Bye guys. Mwah. Thank you.